previously on Science for All. You've probably heard that there were something like three primary colors, uh, red, green, and blue, which are additive primary colors. But what does that mean? And what are the three? And what does it mean that we can add them? I mean, very early on in school, I learned that you should never add different things. You should never add apples and bananas. And here we're adding green light and blue light. What does that mean? And now the answer. So what does it mean to add colors? As you see, it means that we're going to have to talk about very high dimension space, probably infinite dimension space. We'll get to that. The reason why there are three primary colors is simply because in our eyes there are three different detectors of light, three cone cells as we call them. And roughly there's one for blue, one for green, one for red. Except that this is very misleading, it's not really what's happening. First I need to tell you that light more generally is made of photons and each photon carries a certain color, a certain wavelength to be precise physically. In fact, the colors of a rainbow, also known as the spectrum of a light, are all the possible colors of photons. But then, where's the brown? Where's the magenta? Where is the pink? To answer these questions, we need to distinguish the colors of the photons from the colors that our eyes see. And this distinction leads us back to the detectors of our eyes. Each kind of detector captures a certain kind of photons. For instance, the greenish detector detects mostly green photons, although it does also capture a lot of red photons and yellow photons. In fact, if you compare the range of detection of the greenish and reddish detectors, you see that they are almost identical. So the reddish detector doesn't really detect red, it mostly actually detects orange or something like that. So when our eyes see the color, what it actually sees is the number of photons detected by each detector. So it has a number of photons for the bluish detector, the number of photons for the greenish detector, and another one for the reddish detector. In other words, what our brain sees as a color is in fact a collection of three numbers, which mathematicians call a 3D vector. This is because, similarly, any point of our three-dimensional space can be represented as a collection of three numbers. One for the left-right direction, one for the up-down direction, and the third for the forward-backward direction. But the beauty of mathematics is that we can generalize these notions to talk about higher dimension space. Now, you might think that this is just some useless mathematical fantasy, but in fact, if you want to describe entirely a beam of light, you'd have to count the number of photons of all wavelengths. And since there's a continuum of all possible wavelengths, you'd need an infinite number of numbers to describe the beam of light entirely. So in a very real sense, the real color of a beam of light is rather an infinite dimensional object. And that's something that our brains will probably never be able to handle. So light is an infinite dimension space. Wow! Now the fact that there are only three kinds of detectors means that we can fool our eyes. We can have our eyes seeing something that's not really there. Like for instance, yellow photons. Really, when you're seeing this picture right here, you're not seeing any yellow photon at all. That's because your screen cannot display yellow photons. It only can display blue, green and red photons. But here's the trick. When we're exposed to yellow photons, our greenish and reddish detectors are going to activate and detect some of them. But similarly, when we're exposed to red and green photons, these two same detectors are going to activate and detect roughly the same numbers of photons. And so the information that is sent to our brain, which is the number of photons detected by the different detectors, is going to be identical. Our brains cannot discern yellow photons from a combination of red and green photons. What's happening in your eye is basically that the complexity of the infinite dimensional vector 
that describes the color of the light beam that enters your eye is reduced to this three-dimensional vector with only three numbers. This is called a projection and it's a linear projection because it only consists in adding up the number of photons in the right way. In particular, I can now tell you what it really means to add two colors. It means that I'm only going to add up the photons that have the same wavelength. So in this simplified example, on one hand I add up the blue photons together, and on the other hand the yellow photons together. Now what we've just done here is called a vector addition. It's a super kind of addition. It's not just adding two numbers together, it's adding two vectors together. And that's amazing. That means that we can do so much more with a single operation. In fact, this kind of operation, which is ruled by what we now call linear algebra, has become a fundamental and essential part of all of mathematics, pure and applied, all of physics, and all of economics and biology and whatever. Really, this kind of vector addition is extremely powerful. It is at the core of any big data study. One thing you may want to ask right now is do other animals see the same colors as we do? And the answer is a clear no. For instance, dogs only have two different detectors, which means that the information about the color that they see that is sent to their brain only contains two numbers. It's only a two-dimensional object. The same thing occurs for colorblind people. There are some people who cannot distinguish between green and brown. And this is because one of their detectors is not working, so they only see in a two-dimensional space. On the other hand, some birds have up to five detectors, which means that whatever color they see is an object in a five-dimensional space. And I think it's pretty awesome that birds can see the fifth dimension. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed this video that you're going to share it. As you've seen, I'm still in a learning phase. I'm still trying to find what's best for these videos. Right now we are in my office here and I think most of the videos are going to be made here now because, well, it's quite a nice place. It's quiet and I'm all alone now in my office, so it's going to be easier for me. Now you may have noticed that in the last uh, three videos, I've basically introduced uh, the necessary tools so that I can now talk to you about the theory of special relativity and that's what we're going to be talking about next week. In particular, I want you to ponder the question, is the theory of relativity relative? So is the theory of relativity relative? This is what I wanted to think about for next time. Uh, you can share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and whatever. Uh, subscribe also to this channel, it's right up here, uh, so that you don't miss uh, the future videos and it's going to uh, give me a lot of more support and it will give me motivation to keep on. With these videos, I have put a link up there towards my science for article on the topic of this video that is uh, the colors and dimension because a few of the things I said in, all these, in this video are not quite accurate. If you, have, uh, if you want a more detailed and more precise description of it all, check this link and I hope I'll see you next time.